Tzotzi, if I can call it that. Oh. Mm. Because you see, uh, I, and I'm busy writing a chapter or, 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 or actually a, an academic piece, a paper. Okay. Uh, that is titled the, the Gangster Music and the Making of Toxic Masculinity. The gangster music, so the making of toxic masculinity. Gangster music mm -hmm. and the making of toxic masculinity. Okay. All At right. the time, I'm a rural boy, uh, uh, based in rural areas, but mine, because of TV and earlier uh, experience mm -hmm. of growing up, mm -hmm. uh, we want to be nigger, we want to be thug, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, what, what, it, among the values among my peers mm. was how gangster can you be? The more gangster you can be, the more cool you looked. So sure. uh, if okay. so the framework of values mm. uh, was twisted to the extent that I, I, I really desired uh, so that in this world, to graduate from uh, this influential friend of mine's school. Uh, so it was a, 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 a twisted background which has the potential uh, to, to turn really bad. But having said that, I didn't come from a family where one would say, uh, as a matter of survival, we needed to explore alternative ways of generating income. Mm. I was raised by a family of a mother and father that provided and uh, people that earned a decent living. So, mm. so, so this pathway uh, was more a lure of, uh, of street a discipline and street cred, if you like, okay. uh, more than something which was, in, a, 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 you know, prompted by home. So that year, 2001, when I was doing my matric, mm. I had a great encounter with God. Uh, in fact, starting from mid 2000, as an argumentative person, I had already, I had always enjoyed uh, debating about things of spirituality. Mm. And I had been lured into reading the Bible so I could find controversies <laughs> uh, in in my in in in, in twenty in two thousand and I think nineteen yeah two thousand the year two thousand yes. but beginning mid around about mid that year while reading so I could spot some controversies the book began to minister to me mm. and as it did uh, January two thousand and one. I gave myself uh, to the Lord and sure. the trajectory of my life changed from being gangster wannabe to uh, being focused and wanting to live a life of purpose. So that's the, the middle. I don't know if you want me to stop there before okay. I can start from the beginning. Wow, sure, sure, sure. I mean, I didn't know that bit about, um, you know, the, the, the gangster and all of that. Uh, and and we, we tend to think, about, of rural areas as a place of, you know, moral values, conservative attitudes, and so on. And, um, but there's a lot happening there. And by the way, you were born at Kreto, am I right? Uh, uh, in Mosho. Uh, at at Kreto, that's where I studied and I got born again. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was, that's why I, I attended all of my high school. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Wow, thank you so much for starting it there. Now let's go back uh, to, um, you know, to the beginning, as you put it. Let's go, let's go back to the sure. beginning. Yeah. Sure, so I was born to a teenage uh, mother yes. and a 21-year-old um, uh, father in 1983. Yeah. Uh, in PE, mm. and I spent the first eight years of my life between PE and Kwatuku uh, in Pedi with my mater with my maternal family, mm. as my parents were not married at the time. Mm. 
Yes. So I started school school uh, in PE, KK one, and I did my uh, sub A and sub B uh, before my family came in mid 1991 to come and get me so I could join my paternal family and live with them. So went to Pedi, uh, but not Kwaduku this time, uh, but uh, in Kwalubalele, Koha location. That's where uh, my paternal family is based. Okay. My paternal family was a, a family of uh, a man who really haven't, uh, hadn't done much, uh, gone to school much, mm. but were really brilliant entrepreneurs. Okay. So at the time that I went home, Utatawam had been running a, a, the village store. Mm. And then my granddad, whom I stayed with at the time, because uh, my, both my, my mom and dad were staying uh, 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 at my granddad's place in El okay. So, uh, so, 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 so my granddad was a guy who at the time had, wasn't, he wasn't working, uh, but had a farm uh, that uh, had cattle, uh, goats as well as uh, crops okay. and at home also he planted because apparently uh, even mm. and then he had chickens pigs uh, sheep at home and mm. then in the farm the cattle and the goats so we had ubomi boxer bands are very hard mm. Mm. in mm. fact i always compare my grand my granddad's so my my, my maternal granddad was a guy and he would say, uh, you know, say you, you're not going to go where you are being sent to an elderly person. Mm. But my grand, my paternal granddad was quite the opposite. A, a disciplinarian, mm. very loving, very generous. But I mean, we were, I was eight when I went uh, 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 in Moshua, my paternal family. Mm. And he is known throughout uh, uh, various places a bit, more, more for Uba uh, uh, mm. and then also his hard working ways. So, uh, okay. and, and the guy in Amachamba, showmanship. <laughs> so, you had to work uh, very much to, to, to kind of sustain uh, what he was busy with. It, it imprinted a very strong thing in my, in my mind, Lendo Yoko Kuba. Mm -hmm. A man must work hard. So Utam Kul, one of the things that he did uh, was uh, hanging a, a car rib uh, 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 on top of a tree at home. And then at five o'clock every morning, he went out with a, uh, with a, a, a iron, uh, a iron yeah. and he would hit that that rib. Imbambo. No, no, a rim. A rim. Oh, a rim. oh, okay, okay, yes, a rim, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he would hit it, and that was supposed to be our alarm in the morning. <laughs> if you are not up, if you are not up by the time he finishes hitting that thing, he comes to the rondavel where all of us as cousins were sit sleeping, mm. and he would beat the hell out of us. <laughs> uh, we must wake up. The moment we wake up, we start the production related activities of uh, go to uh, go feed the pigs, the chickens, uh, go no mm. uh, because it's generated I light only in the evening. No okay. so that because so people can wash and all of those things. So it was it was a very integrated life where production of goods and services happens here. Mm. Uh, in the domestic space in which we lived. Mm. So it was a fantastic uh, uh, upbringing, sure. uh, very tough. We, had, we, we, we never went into the street to play. We mm. played at home because Damkulu would buy uh, us all kinds of things, basketball, we believe it or not, early 90s, Lukwalu <laughs> Bale uh, location, we were playing basketball and we were playing soccer, and you know, and then what brought uh, you? You you were you were marveling at this thing, or shocked actually, mm. about the in, uh, urban influence in our lives at an early age mm. in rural areas. Mm. So what brought that urban uh, that urban influence was the exposure between uh, six and ten uh, to 
American movies. I think they influenced your Park and Biggie at the time. Hey. Mm. Uh, you know, so 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 yeah, it was this strong, greater bringing of disciplinarians, mm. but at the same time, uh, seeds sown by terrible music, uh, a, 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 as I learned later on, mm. uh, in terms of the content. Mm. Park, no biggie. I told them about uh, uh, call the cops when you see Tupac or, uh, you know, those mm. things, gangster and thug life and those types of... So you had, you were living in this parallel universe of uh, rural entrepreneurs that are really working hard. Mm. That try, make sure that you go to church every morning, mm. every Sunday uh, 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 morning. Mm. And then uh, this influence in Tulo, uh, that's that's that brings in a little bit of urban mm. and yeah so i i studied the Hoja primary school okay uh, until i was far and until i finished my my uh, what you call it my 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 primary schooling and then i went to emfundwen emfundwen that's where my mom my mom was teaching you will note that i said my mom and dad were not married but i i keep referring to mom yeah uh, so 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 when I when I went uh, home after I was taken from PE from my uh, mom's family, mm. uh, I I arrived and my dad was already married at the time, uh, and had umminawam, so so it, 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 there was never that thing at home. You uh, you yeah. mama or who raised me. So yeah. I grew up. Do you know mama who gave birth to me, who got married. And mm -hmm. was staying in PE, and and also the mom who raised me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's 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 that. That was my world. I mean, I don't know if I missed anything. Um, yeah. Very no. prim and proper. Very very prim and proper at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, until my teenage years. That's where, kind of hell broke loose. But my parents would deny some of these things that I'm saying because I was very prim and proper at home, working in the family store. Yeah. But this life that I was living uh, 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 secretly mm. did not yet become so troublesome that parents got embroiled in it. Mm. Mm. No. Uh, the things one smuggled at school, which I can't mention. <laughs> uh, mom didn't. Uma moenga ya smuggle and injema esele motwe nko nizindo that this person is smuggling at school unknown to her. Yeah, but anyway, I am forever grateful to God that 2001 came and I got born again. By the time I went to study at Rhodes. Uh, for my for my for my uh, 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 university education, mm. I was already born again, and it was just a bl a blessed experience to go to tertiary school, uh, especially Rhodes, at a time when I had already given myself to the Lord. Yeah, wow. And I'm just thinking of uh, of that experience. I mean, if you had gone there. Uh, being on your own with other friends without having this anchor uh, with all those influences it could have been, it could have turned out to be terrible how did it happen that you go you went to Rhodes? sure i, I like that uh, so mm. in my school I, I i think i was one of the brightest uh, 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 in my class and it was already it was it was always an expectation that we were going to 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 progress post school mm. uh, but when I was writing my metric here i i i re, I passed yes with endorsement but exemption, but not enough to make it a roads uh, so I applied first to u p e uh, to do become accounting, they rejected me, and then I applied to Rhodes, they rejected the become accounting, mm. and then Umama had uh, uh, oh I had this book my career, mm -hmm. uh, which I had seen, and I'm a creative uh, at 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 the, at the core, mm -hmm. so I had been writing plays even back when I was a high school student, uh, learner. Uh, I, I, I write a lot of poetry. Uh, in the mid-90s, 
when Kwaito was like, you know, making waves, there was a wave in Moshua of groups. So I wrote a lot of songs uh, for, 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 uh, for, uh, for, for some of the of groups mm -hmm. that were there. So I was a creative. Okay. Um, so, so, so I remembered that. Uh, so I went to Rhodes and I had applied for two things, either uh, the become accounting stream, failing which I was going to do a drama and journalism so I could move into film mm -hmm. and, and, and creative uh, industries. Mm -hmm. So you asked, how did I get to Rhodes? So when I, re I received both rejection letters, Umama said to me, and I'm a Kawiya man by Rhodes. Mm. Uh, go to Rhodes and and see what you what can what you can do, mm. and then there was this uh, a sweetest guy. People who went to Rhodes will remember. I just forgot his surname. He said, "Go and meet with him, mm. and then you see uh, 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 whether he can he help out." Okay. I think Mama had taken a few groups uh, on tour, so got to establish the contact. So I went. Uh, and this guy was, was was he received me well, and then guided to say, okay, try, take this, go to uh, uh, the humanities dean, mm. tell him what you've just said to me, uh, and then uh, uh, see what happens. So I go to the dean of humanities, uh, and this this dean is white, I'm black. I mean, I've been to uh, to 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 debating uh, classes representing my school because I was good in English, mm -hmm. but it was as good as English from a rural kid could be, you know? <laughs> so I went, I, I, I really spoke to him. Uh, ooh, 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 I think Professor McDonald's sitting across him saying, look, sir, I know these results are the reason why I'm not getting in, but these don't reflect my capability. So please give me a chance. Mm. And on that day, I had fasted, by the way, I didn't eat. Um, uh, and, and so this guy listens to me, says, look, man, it's going to be, oh, first, sorry, I, I forgot. First mm. of all, they said to me, I must go to the Dean of Commerce. So I spoke to the Dean of Commerce. I forgot what the guy's name was. This guy kept saying, look, bro, uh, go to University of Forte. We don't have space for you here. Sure. Um, you, you, you'll be fine, you know. Hmm. So, so, uh, uh, but as I was, I, when, when I left, I, then this guy got me to go to the Dean of Humanity. So as I spoke to him, the Dean said, okay, go to see this woman. Um, that was responsible for the foundation program there. I went to see her uh, they had, we had a word, we, we chatted and God gave me such favor with that lady. And I think she was called Penny. I forgot her surname. Hmm. She gave, he gave me such favor. Because mm. she got to, she found, she, I think I must have had dry leaves or something. So she asked if I, she should offer me something. I yeah. said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking anything. Um, and then I, 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 it got to that awkward thing where I had to confess that I'm actually fasting. Wow. So wow. 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 for some reason, she really um, uh, appreciated the discussion. Mm. I must say it must have been the presence of God there. Mm. And she wrote, gave a good report to uh, uh, Prof. McDonald's, and I was at Rhodes. Um, uh, 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 passing, I wasn't a, a straight A student at Rhodes. Yeah. I mean, came from passing great grades at, at, at high school uh, to, to really some, some good marks at Rhodes, but average student. I was never mm. the person you could, uh, you could, I wasn't one of the brightest at all at university. Okay. Did you think at all at that point, uh, even did it come to cross your mind that you will be at some point a, a well-known political analyst who's called by media, who does the kind of thing that you're doing now? Uh, did it, I mean, was there a point in your life where you had that, uh, that, that dream or that thought? Absolutely not. So, mm. so, so. But here's the thing, though. It's amazing. When I'm thinking about it now, it's amazing what God does. Yeah. God always gives you clues. Okay. Okay. So the first, with hindsight, 
Mm -hmm. The first clue that I was going to do what I'm doing is that I became so passionate about politics. Okay. Politics, by the way, I got to do it because Rhodes had this crazy thing that you could not, your, our foundation was just one module. Mm. All your other modules were everything else but your major. Okay. 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 So mm. I took politics, sociology, and history, things I had not done. Remember, I was a commerce student, yeah. which I had not done before. Uh, uh, so, 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 but here's what happened. As I was reading politics books, I would, while I'm reading, I would stand up and, 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 uh, and speak as though I was, I was teaching what I had just uh, learned. Sure. Uh, and, and I would, I, and I just had a prompting, a very strong urge in my spirit, stand mm. up and do this. Mm. So I would stand up and talk as if I'm being interviewed. But I mean, are you, are you time, on your I own? Would, are, do you have other I'm people? I'm on my own. own. No, I'm on my own. It's just the book. The, the book is, is exciting me. And by the way, I had this same experience with, with the Bible. Yeah. As I, I, I would read, and I was reading, I would stand up and be preaching wow. uh, to empty, uh, and, and in an empty room. <laughs> Likewise, I kid you not. That's yeah. what I started doing with politics books. So while journalism was the more career-focused uh, thing that I was doing because I dropped drama because of a friend of mine, Tony Savich, who was our mentor, mm. who said, no, drop that thing, drop the drama, uh, do politics and journalism. So, mm. so I dropped it. But even though I was doing journalism and journalism had a clearer career pathway, mm -hmm. I was always clear that what I was going to study further was politics because it just excited this, my, my inner core. Mm. So, mm. so yeah, that's okay. the only clue with hindsight now. Okay. We're gonna... was saying your, your trajectory is going this way. Yes. We, we're going to come back also to, you know, you told me about uh, a prophecy that was mentioned, you know, about some of your, the things that you're going to be doing, but we come back to that now. I just want to wrap up on the, on your Christian journey because you've given us your, 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 your earlier background. You serve now in the leadership team of Victories, uh, Mini, Victory Ministries International and you are an ordained marketplace apostle, all right? Please tell us about that in brief term. What, 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 what is that? And, um, and, sure. and, and, how do you, and how do you derive being part of such a ministry? Uh, in, in other words, how do you experience that? How, what kind of contribution is it making to you to ground you in terms of- Oh, what? sure. Sure, this is amazing. So hmm. I came to Port Elizabeth in 2006 to to work mm. uh, at Kucha. Mm. While I was working, I uh, I went to one church which was campus based, and then I followed a girl <laughs> uh, to uh, to new to 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 Centenary, a new yeah. new Brighton. A friend of mine actually said to me, uh, a friend of mine who was dating someone said, "Let's go to New Brighton because yeah. uh, I'm coming to visit my girlfriend. She's going there." And I mean, we had we were skimming some things, so I also <laughs> went there. <laughs> I went there. I walked into Victory. I saw Apostle Jerome Liberty, mm. and I realized, sure. For some time, I had been living confused as to how does this qualification, which I have done, link with. Uh, me as a person beyond church. So mm. I was living an un incongruent life where I didn't see how the dots connected. So okay. when I went to Victory, I realized, wow, here the preaching is preaching of social transformation. Mm -hmm. God's intention with poverty mm -hmm. in the Eastern Cape and restoration is clear. So there's what I've learned with uh, afterwards that this is called prophetic, pro, uh, prophetic preaching, mm. where preaching is to the socioeconomic issues and history of, mm. an, of, a, of a particular place. So I learned later that's what it was. Mm. But what attracted me to settle at Victor was that one, this preacher here mm. is bringing together my politics mm. and my, my, my faith. Mm -hmm. and is, is preaching a message of 
uh, it is contextualizing how God uh, wants to deal with issues of restoration and rest restitution mm. for the pain that black people have gone through throughout history. Mm. For the first time, I could see a link between the politics and the faith. Mm. Mm. And I was like, I'm settling here. This is my so hope. marketplace apostleship mm. is this idea that not all of us are called to uh, uh, serve or in church on a Sunday mm. and serve around with the ministry, the only personal ministerial aspects of life. Mm. But we've been also called to excel in the marketplaces in order for God to, glo to be glorified in those spaces. So uh, some people, for example, that have summarized this is uh, the Seven Mountains thesis. So people would have seen the writing, I forgot now the guy who wrote it, uh, please you can help me, sir. Um, in the 19, mid 1970s, uh, this Seven Mountains revolution where uh, the, the, evangeliz the evangelization of nations was mapped in seven key streams mm -hmm. education government uh education government the media the mm. church the family i remember um them. the mm. other two um, um uh, entertainment and i think I they got the other well. the economy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The economy so, mm. those are the seven spheres of influence in any society Mm. So my pastor, for example, would say Umpo Stile, that uh, the religion of the marketplace will be the religion of a country. So mm. we, whichever marketplace dominates the, 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 sorry, whichever religion dominates the marketplace, marketplace. of a country mm. will be the major influence in that country oh, such that over time, that religion will become the religion of the country. Mm. So the whole concept around marketplace apostleship is recognizing that God has sent each one of us to take dominance in the, in the spheres he has given us. So there's no divide between full-time and no full-time. Mm -hmm. I, I, as a political analyst, I analyze to the glory of God, the Father. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm never going to mention anything from the Bible when I speak, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised. So when, when you meet me in class, I always thought that my, my, my students think I'm an atheist. <laughs> Why? Because when, I, because when I speak in university, I would say, uh, for example, on matters of faith, whether that's God or Allah, whatever the case may be, mm. or whether that's, uh, that's, that's Jesus or Mohammed, whatever the case may be. Mm. Now, now, one student came to me and said, sir, you say all of these things, but <laughs> we can tell inspired uh, wow. secular speak. <laughs> so you're teaching us secular things, but we can tell what's inspired by God. Sure. And God comforted me there that I don't have to, to be foolish in, a, in, in, in class mm. and be driving Christian dogma. Mm, mm. In class, I'm there to teach politics but God comforted me with the student that says, in the midst of teaching politics, which is secular, we can see the inspiration comes and it cannot be missed. Sure, 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 sure. Man, that's, that's powerful right there. That's really powerful, right? Because my next question was going to be, as you know, that as people acquire educational qualifications and as they grow in their academic careers, the idea of God becomes less important. In fact, in some circles, people are seen as being dogmatic, you know, almost foolish uh, in a way. Um, and and it, it's quite interesting that the idea of Jesus Christ in your life is just permeates your life. And uh, how, how, do that, how, how do you manage that sort of what that appears to be a dichotomy where everybody who's intellectually astute has to be an atheist or an unbeliever, but everybody who's a believer, oh, they still have to grow up. How do you respond to that? Mm. So, so I think for me, mm. the biggest grace and favor that God did for me 
mm. was to um, introduce me to the person of the Holy Spirit and the indwelling mm. presence. Mm. So, 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 so that has been a clear. My my affirmation was done by God when he proved the, the, the intellectual capabilities he had given me mm. at a time when I was operating in obscurity. Okay. So the greatest affirmation that came of the things to come was from the Holy Spirit who said, I want you to settle, son, in who you are first mm. and who you have become in, in Christ so that in future, uh, when I put you on a platform, in that one's ding dong, if I can put it that way, mm, mm. where you want to ascribe your value to the things you have attained. Now, here is a problem of many people who 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 who, who achieve things out without having first received the personal affirmation of God in terms of who they are mm. and their identities grounded in Him. Mm. Is that? these things have got a, a potential entrapment in them. Mm. Because remember, education opens up certain circles. Yeah. Uh, achieving things opens up certain circles. To a person whose sense of self has not been affirmed by God through a cementing by the, by the Holy Spirit inside mm. of that person long before there was recognition, mm. you are going to take the recognition and what comes, the fulfillment that comes from doing things as the identity rather than the identity having been the essence of who you are outside of what you do. So some people have then gotten crazy and, and trapped in the, uh, in, 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 in the benefits of uh, how education has allowed you to get into certain circles. And because you are sick in the center, in mm. your sense of self, mm, mm. you get entrapped and become arrogant and prideful for yourself to uh, to God to to yourself to God and also to uh, other people. You, 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 the, yeah, to other people. Because mm. so, my short answer to your question is this: mm. that the affirmation and the grounding of the Holy Spirit in my identity, in my in my sense of self. Mm, mm, became mm. bigger than anything else. Wow. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, we are now going to move uh, to to the the art of of political analysis uh, just sure. now. But but before before I do that, I just have one colleagues. Uh, everyone who is listening and watching, please feel free to 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 ask your questions. Um, you know, just uh, just indicate that you want to ask a question. We're keeping an eye on Facebook. Uh, as well to just make sure that everybody is um, is is taken care of. Now, in your book, which we're going to give away today, um, actually, uh, it's called Family Feuds. You you say, especially in the light of what you spoke about, you say not only, sorry, not everyone is going to be a great prophet, the highest ranking official in a foreign country or even a king. However, everyone definitely has a calling and a purpose. And our growing up experiences provide God with the necessary materials with which to sure. build all that he needs to have us operate in our God-given callings. That, that's powerful, mm. man. So what, what do you feel is your calling? I mean, you've, you've mentioned it before. Maybe if you can just highlight, what do you feel is your calling and purpose that God has called you? Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I'm happy that you 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 you, you cited that part. Mm. Uh, maybe before I answer you, I, I hear God say say to to me and to to people during this time. Mm. Unless the next big thing in economies around the world mm. is going to come from the recognition of the inherent value that comes from recognizing, especially that passage which you just shared now. Because we live in, a, in an economy, or in, in, a, in a capitalist econo economy, part of its ideology is this, that everything you need to succeed is everywhere else but within. Mm. So we, 
it, this is what capitalism says to cultures. This is what it says to individuals. So our culture, for example, African culture, uh, minus the spirituality as far as I'm concerned, I don't know other people, mm. is so rich with mm. solutions which when we tap into them during this time, mm. they are going to unlock economies. Mm. But it was not in capitalism and Western European expansionism mm. uh, to affirm cultures because in doing so, it would have problematized the idea of uh, Western superiority and white superiority. Mm. So, so, so uh, short answer again to, to, to your question. My purpose is, is this, uh, to, 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 to reorient um, the government of God in the earth mm. and to recenter to resent a godly governance in the earth, okay. mm. uh, god, godly governance and leadership in the in the center in the church. Mm. So to do that, so that's the purpose. But to do that, what God is is is, is, is has been impressing in my spirit mm. is affirming people about their inherent value, and 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 and, and coaching and mentoring people, but also. Uh, speaking to governmental structures and writing to governmental structures mm. to, 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 to negate the lie that has been created since enlightenment, mm. that Christianity represents the backward and science, uh, scientific inquiry represents the, adv the advance, okay? Mm. So let me correct myself because I'm a scientist and I'm, a, I'm based in an academic institution. Yes. Uh, 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 the, the Enlightenment Revolution created a dichotomy between the acquiring of knowledge and Christianity to the extent that it arrogantly closed every other way of knowing, such as the spiritual ways of knowing, mm, mm, and mm. overemphasized science. Okay, so, mm. so, so God wants to recenter the knowledges, the various ways in which we get to know. Uh, and, and in order to do that, he's humbling some of the things that the world has come and has, has, has relied on mm -hmm. and is trusting on his children in different places where he has placed them to arise and speak truth to power and share both. Not, so for example, if you have dreamed something it, it, and you work in a company, God wants to create a, a, a space where Remember that in companies, you must do research and do something. But God wants to drop dreams among his children. You dream something and it is true and it saves your company. Mm. Whereas the arrogance of capitalism is that your spirituality doesn't matter. So mm. it's those kinds of things which, are, which I, I want to be an advocate for. Because okay. I'm saying it, it, it requires of current, the current culture to embrace epistemic humility, humility in relation to how we know, so that we embrace science, but also divine inspiration in terms of how to get ideas for economics, how, mm. for economies, how to get ideas uh, for things. So we're not going to be close. You're not going to deny as a Christian, if mm. you dreamt, let's say, for example, your company manufactures uh, uh, tires, mm. but you have a dream that, you, or you have a prophetic inclination that Today, we mustn't switch on any machine. Mm. We want you to be bold enough to say to your boss, boss, mm. I strongly want to advise against switching on any machine today because I have discerned by the spirit of God that things are, go are not going to go well. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Sure. So this, this, pe this purpose and vision is quite huge. Uh, it, it really is mind-boggling. Thank you so much for that. And I think... Um, you know, if you look at the origin of the old scientists, they were very much close to, to godliness. And, you know, uh, but as time went on, you know, through the, you know, the, um, the French Revolution and things started to change. But let's not get there for now. But thank you for that. Now, I just want to turn to your professional time, uh, work. You, you, you mentioned that you, you, you worked as a, as a spokesperson at Kucha and then as well as the Nelson Mandela uh, Bay Municipality. 
what, what contrasting institutions, I mean, in terms of, uh, of how they have turned out to be. On the one hand, you've got sure. Oka, you know, which looks like the beacon of, uh, of how to run a company of that magnitude. Uh, and I think you've, you've also written, I read an article uh, where you've written about the leader. I, mean, I think uh, Mr. Um, Pepe. 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 Yes, Pepe Silinga. Silinga. Okay. you've written something about that and how he provided the leadership there to make the place really, really, I mean, being a black person, uh, perhaps there were areas, people where they were not expecting. That's one on the one side. On the other side, you know, you've got, you worked in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality, which in my view has become some sort of a, 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 a failed administration. It has almost collapsed. Even friends of mine in PE were telling me that there was a time when there was no water for almost four days. Uh, you know, mm. it, it's really a shame that what that city has become. And uh, what, what in your view should be done by SOEs, by departments of government, municipalities, to achieve the kind of outcomes that were achieved at Kuha? What, what are the ingredients of success there? I, I have, uh, I have I, I've got, uh, I've got, whilst you're meditating on that, I've got two hands here, which I'd like to give at this point. Uh, I'm just going to give Ace, Jafta, and Lifa. And then if you can ask your questions uh, and make it very, very brief, straight to the point, gentlemen. And then there is also Tolika, Sibia. If you can start with you, Ace. Welcome. Ace, are you there? Thank you so much, Prophet. Uh, I just want to ask who put on Mama. Yes. Yes. You you are breaking Ace. You can. Uh, but carry on. Prophet. Yes, sir. Diago Ace. Ace. Maybe he can type his question because uh, it bad to sound can, like. Can you hear me? No, we can't hear you very well. We can't Maybe hear you he very well. Maybe he can type well. his question, and I'm Mr. Kulat. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Ace, okay. if you can just type your okay. question. Uh, perhaps you can. Yeah, Dave. No, that's yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. I just... okay. I see you, Tandy. Okay. Let me. No, that's fine. Get give the fun then. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Wamdiagov. All right, Lifa, go ahead. You can you mute? Can you unmute yourself, please? Hey, Pedro Solomon. Yes. I assume that I'm audible enough. Yes, you are. Mr. Tim, yes, Mr. Timka. I, as I was listening to what you were saying, I dotted down something that I couldn't understand fully which I understand that, as you were saying, you would understand why. Sure. Earlier on, you spoke about how the African culture can um, en enable economic uh, uh, prosperity. You spoke about the African culture enabling economic prosperity. Sure. I try to dice the idea in my mind as to how can a specific culture be able to to embolden the entire economic diaphragm. Sure. Of, I assume you're not necessarily talking about uh, African. Please, man, help me here. How will African uh, culture specifically empower uh, the economy, or rather make the economy to, to prosper? Thank you, sir. All right, sure. thank you. I see uh, Utandiwe. Go ahead, Sisi. Yeah, if you can unmute yourself. Okay, Nadiba. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Baga. Okay. Um, I actually, I actually want to make a comment and then I'll ask a question. Sure. Um, in terms of inquiring knowledge, one of the, 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 the one of the, when he was talking, he reminded me of um, a Black American called George Washington Carver. Um, and cultural scientist 
um, that discovered um, ways to use nuts and alternative ways to use cotton. And then he create, he came up with, um, he invented things. And when people asked him where he got the knowledge from, he said he spoke to plants. That was his answer. He spoke to plants, but if you pay attention to what he was saying, he was actually saying that he connected um, with God and the, the, the knowledge that he got, he got it from Utiko, you mm. know? Mm. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that to add to what he was saying, that mm. it is important to be, to have the connection with the most high. And sometimes some of these things that could liberate us from the issues that we have as black people, you might not get them, you know, from, I don't know, ideas might come from the source, like, directly from the source. Mm. Um, and then my question to Ubudi is, in terms of uh, gangster music and masculinity, um, it seems to me, and I might be wrong, that there's an issue of identity crisis, when, um, an issue of identity crisis, and on top of that, there's a Ukumbulba, Ukumbulba has come busy for that gangster and toxic masculinity, ne? Uh, but, 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 you, but, 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 yeah, but, 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 Okay, all right, all right, that's very interesting. And, and we're gonna bring uh, Ongama back to talk about when he's done with his work on, uh, on this book, because I think it's a big issue, this issue of toxic masculinity and so on. Now, there's a, a note from Facebook that says, someone with children is disturbing. Can, uh, can you please switch off the video? Um, if you've got children, other people get distracted uh, that are moving around, please just um, switch off your video. You got Uace uh, and some morning, um, and maybe he will write his question. But you heard the question, sir. Can you go ahead uh, and address them? Uh, che, che, I thought I thought you noted me as well. Who's that? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, man. And some morning, woke up. Tolika, Sbia. Go ahead. You you need you need to unmute Hello? yourself. Yes, go ahead. No, no, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Chair, and uh, thanks to uh, Ongama, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mtiga. Well, my name is Doliga Chair. Well, yes. the first comment that I want to make to uh, Mr. Mtiga is that uh, I marvel and appreciate his contribution in the public discourse when he makes analysis around the challenges that we are faced with as a country. Mm. I marvel it because subjectively, of course, because I'm also a, a former student of, as it were, of the Nelson Mandela Metro. Okay. Uh, over the past 10, 10 years or so, when I was a student there, I would always ask myself, I'm also from the Department of Politics and Sociology, I would ask some of the lectures why we as NMU don't have a political analyst that comes from this university. Mm. Of course, they will give different excuses. I'll even ask them why you guys, at least you are lecturers, you've got what it takes. Why mm. don't you comment in the public discourse around the issues that society are confronted with? So I'll get no answer. So it has, some, it has been something that has been quite uh, bothering me. I'm very happy that Ongama uh, Mtiga Mm. which is uh, almost bar, almost bar one, by the way. It's bar in the sense that <laughs> Umfa is working was a bizarre and it's very bizarre. I will oh, I'm, very, I'm very happy because in a way he's trying to bring a fresh ideas mm. that has never existed at NMMO before. They last existed at the time when there was about about Susan Poison. Poison. Mm. Uh, Yes, poison, yes. Mm. So I wanted to make that comment that uh, Mr. Mtiga, 
you may take it light the comments that you make and some of the the criticism that you get on facebook mm. but some of us we mm. really appreciate it because that which you analyze and make in the public discourse does not only represent your reading and everything but it speaks to the institution that we are proud to have been associated with mm. that's the first comment chair that i wanted to make the second mm. comment that i wanted to make was or is uh, I, I also want to understand what does it take for one to be a political analyst? Okay. Of course, I don't take anything from oh, oh, Mr. Mdiga, but I just want him to give me a sense of what is it that you must have for you to be an analyst. So that at least as we listen to this number of analysts, we're able sure. to detect as to whether or not this is the true or it is not the true. Thanks. Uh, you've actually taken two of my questions, but I'm happy. Thank you for that. The first one was going to be about uh, whether it's an issue of the media, which is not exposing analysts which are outside of, of Gauteng, uh, or, yes. or, or, or whether we don't produce in other areas uh, or, or what. But I think you're going to come back. So, Ongama, can we start with my question around, you know, Koha versus PE, uh, PE municipality, and what do you think needs to be done there? And then we're going to come to the questions that Lifa asked, as well as Tandiwe, and then we just need, uh, and then uh, my friend over here, Nanziga, the guy from Pizana, just for Utolika. Uh, go ahead, sir. Um, sure. So, how much time do we have, Kanene Ngoku? Well, so you remember when you said Kabango, half past. Uh, so half past three, but uh, if you are available, sure. we can we can continue a few a few more minutes just to make sure that we wrap it up nicely. Oh, okay. By the way, I I had I had organized I think with SAPC that sometime I think shortly after we're done, yes. uh, they they will be calling me. So I, I should be wrapping up around about. Uh, a, a, in fact, it's fine if we wrap up as as arranged. Okay, fine. Uh, right. uh, when, 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 when you are busy taking some, some more questions, yes. don't, people mustn't be uh, think that I'm gone because I'm going to switch my screen over so yes. I can wa uh, WhatsApp the producer to say they must call me after half past. Okay, sure. All right. So, yeah. yeah. If, if so, if quick one. Then, so that we can move for, forward faster. Sure. Mm. It's a leadership question, mm. uh, the, this thing about how one organization is able to produce results, another not. Mm. And leadership, security, a sense of security, mm. and, 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 and also a sense of purpose. Mm. So if you look at the, the leadership in the mid 1990s, as black people, as the black government mm. was committed to disprove Afro pessimists that they can, Africans can govern. Mm. So Mandela, Mandela mm. uh, came from a tradition, by the way, uh, that recognized Maluleka uh, among other things. Mm. And, and, and the, I, the African National Congress, the, the, the African National Congress of the time, mm. uh, the African National Congress of the time uh, was uh, meritocracy was very strong. Mm. There could never be ANC leaders. Uh, there could never there could never be ANC leaders in 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 the in the. Sorry, I, I'm getting interrupted by 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 call, but but let me, I'm continuing. So there could never be. Uh, uh, my my screen keeps disappearing. I, I'm, I, I suspect it's. Yeah, that's why I was They're calling I was, you. I was, I was, I was, it, it it probably yeah. is about no. the, the Gauteng uh, NEC or P, PEC. Probably. Yes. 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 All right. All so right. I was I was I was never about. Uh, so the ANC was never about the. It, it was always meritocracy. You could never find somebody mm. who is mediocre leading the party. Mm. Anyway, so Oda Mandela still embraced as a spirit. Mm. In the 1990s, they were looking for the brightest. And mm. by the way, some of the people that ended up being corrupt 
are people who were out otherwise cultured in that in that space in that culture of uh, uh, excelling Africans that want to prove a point that uh, mm. Africans Africans can govern. Mm. So 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 that is the case. Now leadership was systematically targeted wow. among these institutions in order to collapse them so that a culture of less no excellence and no a commitment to the ideals of doing things exceptionally mm -hmm. uh, uh, could be done. So deliberately, both at the party political level as well as in government, mm -hmm. people were systematically targeted. And while a, 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 another system was developing, mm -hmm. that system is a... Uh, Ongama, we lost you there. Uh, Ongama, can you hear me? What you can do. Remember that meritocracy itself makes uh, political systems fragile mm. because political systems thrive on the basis of alliances that can be built. Mm. Now, when those alliances are not built, it's a challenge because what you find is that uh, 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 politicians are not able to wield power over officials who feel that they are secure in who they are and can uh, and are there because of what they know. Mm. So that's the, the the crux of the problem. You mm. talk about Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. Do you know that when I came to Nelson Mandela Municipality in 2009? That municipality consistently featured in cleanest city uh, uh, awards. Mm. That municipality had a good financial sta status. The, the performance in terms of uh, uh, collection rates of revenue for the municipality was very high. Sure. Uh, the, 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 the service delivery indicators were very high. Even under the ANC, the only difference is that there came a political culture that sought to erode those things, precisely because people wanted a weaker institution so that money can be swindled out of the administration. When the administration had executives that were excellent, mm. those, those executives, some of them were ANC, some of them were not. Uh, uh, were able to 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 you know uh, to to lead. They were in some of the. I mean, we lost a, a CFO to Cape Town. Sure. Cape Town took a CFO from here. Cape Town took a human settlements person from here mm. because they were exceptional. Mm. But they, so they collapsed because there was a deliberate agenda to to take them out of the of the process sure. of the system, mm. and then. Around, around the, on the question of culture, you see, there's a lot of, when, when, when Europeans started farms in South Africa, commercial farms, they battled to outsmart Abandobamnyama in terms of the quality of product mm. and cost. One of the reasons why they battled, and this is in a book written by Colin Bandy, by the way, so it's not something I'm making up. Okay. They battled to, to compete with black farmers because black farmers had a better product at the same time it was cheaper. Mm. You know why? Mm. When, they, when, when they inquired as to how come this happens, they realized black people didn't have labor costs. Mm. Why? Because the whole village goes there for Ilima. Ilima, yes. But it's not the same as, that's why sometimes I say uh, people, class analysis is limited because in the African culture, those people who go there is the average village member to go and, and offer their labor. Mm. They are not selling it as a, a, at a unit. Mm. They are going to cultivate Amasimi in a given day. There's no sense of entitlement to the harvest, mm. but it's going to be shared anyway. So, so, so that's one technical process of production which is which which is african in the sense that it leverages the collective culture 
mm, but mm. It, thri it thrived in the 1800s in the competition about crops. And I'm saying that it can thrive even now where labor, we, 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 we stop this thing of taking Marx to African, the African context, because mm. Marx doesn't apply to Lima. Mm, mm, mm. Indeed, that, that, that production is owned by the private citizens that stay, the residents, the, ho the household that stays there, they own the production. Mm. So the community come and work there for free. But the only thing that I expected is that us two, when we are done with working, you're going to serve us whatever, whether it's Amasi or Mkombo, whatever the case may be, and mm. the village stays, you know? ah, so, 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 that's one thing which we cannot learn. If you look at this garment I'm, I'm, I'm wearing, the, the design for this, Ula Duma taps into his sense of self, his culture, and he goes and calls it Makosa, and he's printing money, that boy, as a result of he, 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 re, re, respecting himself and his culture. Mm. Sure. Umaste KG in Goku is, 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 is a global hey, Which music can I find that's American? Obviously, I mean, you, you, now cultures are, the, the beauty about cultures is that the cultures are integrated. So house and all of those things, those, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying let's go back to pre-colonial Africa. I'm saying let's bring in elements of who we are, we are yes. into what we know now so that we can thrive as a people. Uh, Black Panther, multi-billion dollar film. It is tapping into Sutu blankets, into Kosa language, into certain artifacts. So the point I'm making is that we have to get to a stage where we leverage, we respect ourselves enough to say, what assets and heritage do we have uh, that we can export to the rest of the world? Mm. So the other thing, so as for as 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 a, as a people hospitality was not an industry hospitality was common was was a was a a, a, a duty of a citizen mm. so that's why it is out it is so so mambi asinga kanani and nyawo alinampumba alinampumba okay when I, the saying it is so so mambi asinga kanani says that show generosity and if a a a, a, a traveler walks into your house Make sure that upaka in because you don't know uba lomtula bekanga kanai. But the point I'm making is that some of these principles we can take and apply them in in and then the last ones that I've applied in politics, for example. Mm. We have politicians now who are African who think that uh, they they so they, they build institutions which are arrogant in relation to society. When free wisdom they were taught when they were growing up, shows them, and then because you create this thing, you are dehumanizing in your relationships. Hmm. The dehumanizing in politics is this, that when you take me, uh, and you don't emphasize what I know and my sense of inner value, mm. but Undibala as a number in affection, yeah. you are dehumanizing me, mm. right? And then once in Dimke, once I'm no longer potent in the affection, mm. because I had subjected myself in a dehumanization process, Dilibele no babende in government for so long, and I can convert what I have learned into leadership lessons which i go around and teach right so these so you find that people who have got value but were dehumanized by being taught that you are as important as uh, as you remain here otherwise mm. outside of here it's cold mm. now mm. these people they live and they don't they don't do things which and this pains me because some of the brightest politicians uh, we had were out in the cold but they failed to convert some of what they knew into uh, uh, income generating things because 
they subjected themselves to dehumanizing relationships. So, so the point I'm making is that when you recognize your sense of self, your worth, and your, and your, and your true value, you begin to tap into things which some end up becoming income generating. Mm. And that, so, so that's, I hope I've, I've given enough examples around the culture idea. No, you have. And you then, have. Uh, yeah. You got the question Uma Musonjita asks Payaku yes. yes. uh, on the chat. Yes. So here's the thing. When we analyze politics, we are helping an, a number of uh, people. It's, in, it's, it's the average citizen so that they can sift through the lies of politicians <laughs> and be able to vote. <laughs> mm. Okay. Then secondly, it's investors who want to understand the policy direction of a country. So that, so for example, when, what, what I said on around this thing, the expropriation of land without compensation, is that it even the DA was 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 was, was it cost itself by opposing it mm. because all that is needed was to include a clause in the constitution that says land can be expropriated without a compensation. Uh, compensation where it meets certain parameters. Okay, the DA in the Eastern, in the Western Cape and here in Nelson Mandela Bay we have a problem of delinquent land, law, land building owners that are not looking after their buildings and the buildings have dilapidated and they are called an eyesore in the city center. Mm. Expropriation legislation is needed. You expropriate that building from that person as a punitive measure mm. and you unlock the building for economic value. Mm. Okay, but, but one of the things we were saying about expropriation though was that it was not as the EFF and the ANC from its conference were saying. Mm. It was never going to be that. One person, for one politician, for example, after the bill was passed in parliament, said, write to Tambo and tell them the land has returned. I said, that's absolute, uh, oh, the, the, <laughs> uh, hogwash. Hogwash. <laughs> Mazalwane. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's absolute rubbish and hogwash. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Because the land has not returned because you've passed a bill that says you can expropriate. Mm. Because give the EFF power tomorrow. They could never expropriate land in the manner that they exploit that concept to be. Mm. Because it just cannot happen in our times. In order for you to expropriate land, you have to, to win war a war and, t and take land by force in a war. It's never going to happen in a democracy. So, mm. so that's the point that, so when we say these things, Gemma, we are now assuring investors to say, look, beyond the rhetoric, this is the likely policy direction. So mm. for example, in South Africa, one of the things that I say when I speak to business people is that South African policy will always be centered center left, center right, or center. There's no way in this country you're going to have extreme left or extreme right policies. Okay, I, do, I can say that, and it, it, reassures, it reassures both a domestic investor and a foreign investor who is scared by the rhetoric. Mm. Because, because, because in the end, we analyze for what is it that's likely to happen in the next five to 10 years. Mm, now, mm. now, 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 you are quite right, Mama, that at times this, uh, there may be national security issues. For example, commentary which talks to the capabilities of a defense force and lack thereof. Mm. Uh, the, the, the real state of the defense force. Now, we, it is not for us to manage national security. Ours is to do what we do and allow those who, are, who, who must do uh, national security. So if things are not right, we're going to speak about their lack of being right. National security questions must be addressed by the politicians. So, and, and by the way, this is something Shamila Batoy is going to grapple with too. Shamila Batoy, if she wants to arrest the Minister of Finance, she cannot be worried about the response of the rent. Mm. Uh, 
She cannot be worried about the response of the rent. That's not her mandate. Her mandate is to fight those who do wrong. So if she arrests the Minister of Finance, I'm just making an example. If yeah. she arrests the Minister of Finance and the rent, the rent plunges, that's not hers for her to manage. So the point I'm making is that at some stage, we must be true to what we do mm. and then allow other people to manage what they do. A quick one uh, on, 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 what, on how we analyze and what makes analysis. So, mm. we understand, so there are a, a number of strands in politics. Yes. It's, pol it's political theory. Political theory deals with philosophical questions. Why do you need the state? Why must the state be obeyed? What are the parameters for uh, the state to be obeyed? I thought that this was only philosophical until the lockdown. Mm. During the lockdown, I found myself tapping into this to analyze what was happening. So one of the pieces that I wrote at the beginning was a, a support for lockdown. That's what it's titled if you Google it. Mm. There, I, tapple, I, I tackle philosophical questions about why did South Africans obey the idea of closing churches when mm. we have a constitution that says there's freedom? Or why did South Africans obey uh, uh, the thing up which barred freedom of movement? Mm. But we have a constitution that guarantees it. So mm. there, I found myself uh, tapping into political theory. Okay, so it's, it's issues, theories, and concepts, mm. uh, Mr. Tolik. <laughs> uh, so, 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 that, that's, so that's one. Mm. The other strand in politics is what we call comparative politics. Mm. In comparative politics, we look at different, so it's mainly the US and the UK compared to the rest of the world. Okay, democracies, mm. American democracy compared to Western democracy. But what's happened now in, in, in comparative politics too is the politics of the developing world. Okay, so, but we, we, look at, we look at countries in comparative terms. So if you say uh, there's corruption in South Africa, so we, 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 we would then say, where does South Africa fall in, 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 in global uh, 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 co corruption index? Mm. Okay, mm. Where, and, and what does that mean for its, its, tra its tra tra trajectory? For democracy, we do likewise. And then we have political economy the nexus between politics and business. Mm. There, our interest is how, how does power dynamics in a society influence economic decisions that get made, mm. among other things. And then there's international relations where we look at the balances of power between countries. Mm. Now, to be a good political analyst, uh, my understanding, and, but there's, there's some gray area in the practice, in the media, because remember, we're not a, a regulated profession like accounting. Mm. You have to have your masters. And for me, my own journey was, I started writing opinion pieces. Mm. And those opinion pieces are what generated interest so, from the media, uh, among other things. Uh, so, so then one was able to, to, to to get to analyze politics. Mm. Uh, it, but generally, it's people with PhDs even that are doing uh, political analysis. Mm. Uh, and I believe, and, and then, yeah, yeah, it's mainly uh, uh, people Those. with PhDs. Okay. I think, I think you've covered the questions uh, sufficiently. And um, I think there was a, a comment from, um, uh, from Utandiwe, but, and I see that there's another comment around the issue of max, uh, masculinity and toxicity. I think let's sure. agree with you, um, uh, you know, Ongama, now that we're going to come back to discuss that point because I think it's a big issue in our country. And even uh, on Facebook, I see here that Fundi Somosi is, um, is talking about a, a number of issues that may relate to that. He says, I fail to understand why us as, Af as South Africans citizens, we, when we are in power or in leadership, we can't speak the same language of serving and fulfilling the needs of our people, no matter what political party we are, and so on. Now, I, I think we, 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 we are moving towards the, the close, but I do want to talk, uh, I want you to talk about the book, 
All right. Uh, I, I, you know, we went to town on the issue of the analysis, and I think you've covered as much as you could under the time. Now, can you just briefly share with us the key message uh, of your book? Um, it's called The Family Feud. Can you just summarize for us what was behind your writing of that book? Sure. So, 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 so in our journeys as people, mm. we get... We, 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 so what, what we go through in families. Yeah, here's the book, is, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's the kind of things that we want to go get over with and forget so that we live our lives elsewhere. So if your family was involved in conflicts when you were growing up, your focus generally gets to be, how can I leave this so that I can, uh, I, I, I can, uh, create a future for me and my children. Mm. In this book, I'm, 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 I'm toying with an idea that says, in us just recognizing family feuds as pain points in our history, we are missing on the value and the gold that we have that we can mine from them. Mm. So one of the things I say, for example, is that, so, so I, met, I told my own story, right? Now, now, as a child, if you must learn to manage the complexity of, I have a maternal family. Mm. Uh, my, my maternal families are three by virtue of the fact that I've got the mom who gave birth to me. I've got the mom who raised me. I've got my dad. And in the, amidst all of those are potential issues of conflict. Mm. What we miss is the ability of children to manage things mm. uh, from a very early age. Mm. Uh, hey, I cannot talk like this when so-and-so is around because I know how Ubani feels about them. Mm. Mm. I cannot say this because so-and-so doesn't really like me, blah, 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 blah. Now, I'm saying there are skills which we learn as a result of that. If ISO skills, the particular character traits. So for example, uh, one of the things that, is, uh, uh, that people, some people may have mm. is the ability not to, not to fight Abanyabantu Kakuliwa for repositions. Mm. When you dig deeper, you realize that this person grew up in an environment where they felt other people were more deserving to receive things compared to them. Mm. Okay. The value and the heritage of that is that it's given them a character disposition which is not given to a ukulwa nobumtak, right? But the disadvantage of it may be that that person may, 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 may tend to self-sabotage more often than not. Mm. So people who get to know this heritage then get to realize, oh, okay, in business transactions, if I'm going into a negotiation where we are fighting uh, and I want a win-win solution. I must deploy so-and-so who grew up in, envir in an environment of winner take takes all. Mm. Because Yena is going to be able to manage because why, they did this when they were four years old and they've mm. done it mm. ever mm. since. Uh, mm. how, how, how other siblings are able to take a, a, a piece of the pie while Bona, they will have just a little bit but they will still be happy. So this, this knowledge helps us to be able to, to, to determine negotiation strategies, negotiation teams, teams that do certain things and all of those things. But mm. if the person themselves who went through them didn't go through a process of first healing, recognizing first that those things that you went through were wrong and were hurtful. Mm. And then I'm saying, then move from the, the hurt and the wrong to saying, okay, thank you, Lord, that you've helped me come to terms. Oh, by the way, uh, I know that the time is running out now. So, mm. so by the way, one of the things, uh, 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 one of the things is that uh, once, once uh, you, 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 there the, the does come a point in your life. For me, it was the mid twenties mm. when all those things you went through as a child come to the fore. Mm. When they come to the fore, they come as pains, they come as, as things. But 
they don't come to the fore in your conscious mind. Mm. They come to influence your feelings and your attitudes and your thoughts, but subconsciously. Mm. Now, many people lose themselves in that period. Now, uh, uh, Smart, I, I've not tested this one or to, or to all the academics here. I've not tested this through research, mm. but I, I, have, I have an emerging thesis that says then people end up getting given to drunkenness, uh, given to substance abuses, and all kinds of things that are meant to numb the pain that is image, Im, Im, coming uh, from below, beneath the surface. And it comes in the surface, but still without becoming clear that, hey, this is me, your mm. nasty experience that you experienced when you were young, mm. coming in a different form. So mm. this is the grace that God did for me. He helped me to first deal with the questions of uh, being born to t a teenage mother and a, a 21-year-old father. Then uh, it, it, I, I remember questions that God, the Holy Spirit was asking me at the time. How do you think what the feeling was when the news was announced that mm. you've been conceived? Mm. And I thought, sure, a 19-year-old was preparing to go to school the next year at university. Mm. My dad was probably starting work. And I thought, oh, I'm sh I don't know about my dad, because I know that he was there right from the beginning. Very mm. loving uh, gentleman, my father. Mm. But I, I suspected that my mother was so disappointed that she was not going to be able to study further. Mm. That's a reality. Mm. And, and, and the fact that I wasn't conscious at the time, uh, those who understand the laws of spiritual influences will know, uh, 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 those <laughs> I'm at home, so, so I, it's, okay. Parent, so, it's okay. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. So, 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 those who know, those who know will realize that the spirit of a person captures things long in the womb because before the ears and the and book theater mm. becomes a thing. Mm. So it will it will be a, the, your, those things would be embedded in spirit. So God was helping me in my twenties to say. Now I want you to cry about, in fact, it didn't even, I, I, as God asked me those things, the Holy Spirit asked me those things, I began to weep, and that was beginning my, my process of deliverance. Sure. And so anyway, and, and once Kengoku, I, the deliverance started, and then mm. I asked myself, hey, I was eight when I, when I moved from my mom's family to stay uh, with my, da my, my, my dad's family, mm. uh, and, 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 uh, and, and needing to look at the kinds of things I would need to manage as an 80 year old. Then again, it triggers another period. I mean, I, 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 nothing for my mom and dad, they were wonderful and loving. Mm. But as a child taken from your own mother and mm. in an environment that is strange, it's still a loving and a great environment, but it doesn't it's say real. you didn't yeah. manage things. Mm. So you were managing things. Now I begin to say, but throughout all my life, there were things I was policing. Now that I'm in my mid twenties, I no longer need to police certain emotions. Then one goes on a process of uh, crying about that. And, did it, and then get, uh, uh, healing is coming throughout. Mm, so mm, the point mm. here is that once, the, once this process started of healing, mm. then one recognized, okay, now the heritage of it all comes. Wow. Because now you've healed, you are able to tap into by the way, uh, one of the things roles, I, I was a spokesperson for, for, in, for two organizations, right? Mm. Spokesperson is, two, is one thing. Mm. Get to understand and defend the brand. Mm. I did that when I was eight years old. Wow. <laughs> Get to understand and defend. Mm. Get to understand, uh, subject your own will, uh, talk about that. You know, all of these, you, so, so that's why I said, God has a plan amidst the chaos. Mm, the mm. plan is uh, you are going to fulfill a, 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 a function of a spokesperson. I need to make you to be a very patient person. Mm. You are going to be a, a speaking in public platforms and you're going to get public criticism. I need to make you a person who's okay with being swan at. Mm, mm, so, mm. So, so you learn these things. Uh, in a, so the, the point here is that Mm. God builds systematically. He mm. uses, by the way, it's not, I make the point in the book that yeah. it's not God who creates these nasty experiences. Mm. Mm. It's Satan, yeah. but 
as Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things mm. work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So it is the things working together that were mm. meant for your harm, mm. which become part of your heritage. And, wow. and, and, and yeah, anyway. All right, let, yeah, let, let, we're gonna, let, let's wrap up, man, by saying how, how did that all, I mean, you've got two boys, you've got a, you've got a wife. How, how did the, all of that shape how you relate now to your own uh, immediate family, briefly? How, how did that help you to be able, that healing and thinking about those things? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, first of all, it, it saved them from the nastiness of an unstable father. Mm, 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 mm. Because the father is whole, uh, God has worked with him. Uh, if you ask my wife, she will tell you the things she's, she's battling with, with me, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but, but in general, so, 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 so that's a wholeness. Mm. That's the biggest thing. And then mm. I think in our family, there's a lot of joy and, 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 and just fulfillment from one another. Mm. And, I, and also a consciousness of certain things that, we have needed to manage. Mm. Uh, on another platform, I will talk about how with our firstborn son, we had to deal with certain things mm. that we knew could arise from, you know, uh, the, his own experience and his own context. Mm. Uh, so, so, so these things help you to become aware and they empower you. I, I kid you not though, Lest somebody thinks that we have a perfect household. We have, as far as peace is concerned, it's happy. As far as joy is concerned and fulfillment from one another, absolutely. Mm. Are we a household that need to grapple with certain things, uh, certain things which we think, hey, we failed there. Absolutely, there are things we failed as parents. Mm. There are things we failed to do uh, mm. uh, as husband and wife, I'm sure. Uh, uh, but All of us. God yeah. has been gracious enough. God has been gracious enough to help us to build momentum. Those things which we didn't get in one season of our lives, in the next we're able to make corrections. And mm. the, 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 the broader story is one of beauty, is one of uh, everybody is being healed and fulfilled in, uh, in the household. Well, 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 the time, I don't know where time went, but wow, we had a, a wonderful and a motivating and inspirational discussion Ongama, we don't know about all of these things when we see you guys on TV talking there about all the big political issues in all of that. But it's amazing the story behind, uh, behind, behind people like you. And, I'm, and I really appreciate the fact that you took this time to just edify all of us and so that we can all know that a boy who came up from, uh, in, from the kind of background that you came up I mean, I have my own background, my own dysfunctionalities, but I can identify and say, we can still be something on this earth. That is the main message we want to send from, at least from, from, from our program here. So thank you so much for your time. And we really, really appreciate that. And from what I read, uh, people are saying very profound responses. I like the thematic responses and so on. And I appreciate the fact that you have to go and deal with that. We have a corruption issue in Gauteng, and then um, maybe they want to speak to you about that. So thank you again. You feel free to go whenever you, uh, you, you are going. Because what I want to do is just to, to, share, to tell, to give uh, this book out to everyone. But before you go, just tell us how can people get a copy of your book and then or contact you around it. So the book, uh, used to be available in a book in a in a shop called Fogarty's in PE. Mm. One of the things we need to grapple with as black uh, producers of content and clothing and everything, clothing and everything, is distribution. Mm. That's something we need to work with. Uh, there's a lot of books that are written. That's not so. Long story short, the book now is available through direct uh, purchases. Mm. So people. Uh, make an art, reach out to us in any of the platforms. Those who are in PE can make a payment and collect from our NPO office. Those who are outside of PE make payments and send us their address. We then send them the, the, the book, much, much like you received it, uh, Mr. Kulat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, stop reading this book. Thank you so much, man. 
uh, and then uh, people can get hold of you. I mean, they can go to your Facebook page. They can find a way of talking uh, to you to show that they need the book. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It came on time, and I was not expecting it to come as fast. So thank you so much. I want now to give this book uh, to a person. Uh, uh, it's just, and, I, and the reason I'm going to select this person is because when I when I spoke and I showed this on Facebook, he said, I want that book, please. And I'm going to be there. His name is Butmafana Koda. Yes. Uh, and so, Butus, if mana this book, you're going to get it from me. We really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who joined us today. And have a great life. And uh, those of us who are struggling through issues, we know that there's always an opportunity for us to bounce back. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate it. All the best. Thank you. May God bless everybody who attended. Thank you uh, to you, too. Uh, yes. but, uh, may you get uh, great rewards from this. Thank you, man. Thank you. All the best on Facebook. All the best on Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us. Those who couldn't answer your questions, they will ask him again to come back. Thank you. Right, let me read here. Uh, Tandy, I don't know if your, all your questions were answered uh, or your comments were uh, uh, acknowledged, but uh, we're going to come back to the issue of GBV uh, uh, some other time. I hope you can hear me. All right. Ma? Uh, okay. Yes, you can engage him on the side outside this forum. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. And uh, those of us who are aspiring to be political analysts, now we know what to do. All the best, guys. God bless. Cheers. Yeah? I can't do Facebook. Oh, okay. <laughs>